Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. Hello, Varsha, how are you? Um, I'm good, how I'm doing? I'm good. sorry I wasn't able to be here last time. My grandparents came and visited for a while, for a while. Oh, okay, yeah, went yeah. somewhere, so. Yeah, it's fine. Those things happen to everybody, right? It's fine. I might have to uh, turn out the uh, echo here. Come back. Okay. So we heard uh, a song uh, by Ovini last week. Is that you? Oh, yeah. Do you want to say anything about it to us? Oh, well, it's about Gruan Melisaya in Lanka. Mm -hmm. It's about Gruan Melisaya in Lanka. So, what did you, uh, uh, I mean, see in the lyrics? I mean, what, did, what does it talk about exactly? I mean, just the history of Gruan Melisaya or? Yeah, it's like, the, it's like the history of Ruan Velisai. And then in one part, it was talking about like all the Buddhas um, that like uh, Gautama, Gautama Su Buddha Varian and stuff like that. Okay. 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 So um, we are supposed to discuss about, uh, I think, uh, the next uh, perfection parameter. Does anyone remember what uh, we did last time? I think we did Adittana. Adittana. So, Dhanam, Silanchane, Kammam, Panjaviri, Panchamam, Kanti, Satcha, Madittana, Metta. Okay, so, today is Metta. So, I think this is going to be uh, the 11th, sorry, ninth parameter. So, we have only 10 parameters. Ten names of parameters perfection. So this today is going to be the ninth one. Okay. And I see another another uh, interruption here. The battery. Sorry about that. We all have to. Okay. Yeah. So metta is uh, is one of the main, I would say, uh, the most important uh, virtue in a sense that uh, we practice in our daily life. Is it correct? What is metta? Anybody knows the meaning of metta? Uh, loving kindness. Okay. Uh, recently, the Facebook uh, was changed to Meta. Is it Meta or Meta? M E T A. I think it was just Meta. Somebody said, "If you, what if uh, uh, if you were to add another T between T and A, Meta." So Meta simply means uh, friendliness. Or well, is the uh, generic idea of Meta. But it uh, uh, ranges. I mean, the, the meaning ranges between friendliness and uh, like kind of the higher meaning of uh, that particular virtue. Actually, uh, in one of the suttas, the Buddha said, "If we really, truly practice metta, loving kindness or friendliness." Uh, the, the good karma we make uh, can actually take over any other good karma that like we do by other things, dana, sea level, so and so forth. Now, Varsha might be a little bit uh, wondering how can this notion of friendliness become a mental thing? Because we say friendly means, okay, I'm friendly with this guy. I am friendly with uh, all these people. Right? How can this become a, a kind of a mental attitude? Is friendliness a kind of a mental attitude, Tarushan? Or is it just a cultural norm? I think it's like, 
Is it an attitude or is it something like an action that we do? Or is it the both? I think it's like both. Is the both? A little bit of both. Varsha? Um, what was the question again? Uh, now we uh, we were trying to understand metta to be friendliness, right? So we know we need to be friendly with uh, uh, most of the people. Like uh, we don't, we want to be nice to everyone, right? Even with the bad guys, you know, they want to say you are a bad person, right? But we know how to be smart with those people. So if if metta uh, uh, is to be understood as friendliness. So then how do we uh, take it as uh, something mental? So is it, a, is it a kind of, because in Buddhism, everything is a mental, right? Yeah. Everything is mental, like even, even karma is also mental, but the Jains, the Buddhist time, there were Jains, like the people who are very famous even now, they said uh, more things about the physical side of activity. Let's say um, you are walking and then, uh, they say if you step on any animals, like tiny creatures, then you are making bad karma. The Buddha said, if you don't know, then uh, you don't make karma because you don't know. But if you are doing it intentionally, then you are making karma. So it is in the middle path, you know, it is not extreme about stuff. Uh, when Devadatta, you know, who is Devadatta? Ovini? Who is Devadatta? Uh, Devadatta is the Buddha hunter's cousin. Cousin, and he's uh, not a good monk, uh, as we see. Yeah. He's always trying to uh, kill. I'm, like Buddha. jealous about the Buddha hunter and like, yeah, kind of, jealous. like very friendly. Yeah, jealous. At the same time, uh, uh, he had some issues for long, long, uh, you know, many, many lives, and uh, he ultimately tried to uh, kill the Buddha by, you know. Uh, throwing a stone, uh, he got he got injured. The Buddha got injured, and sometimes oh, the thing is that he he proposed five things to the Buddha, asking him to grant permission. You know what they were? Okay, every monk or monastic should stay in the forest. Okay, every monk or nun should stay in the forest. Every monk or nun, they should stay uh, with the ropes made up from the uh, dead bodies. At that time, the dead bodies were actually wrapped with, with some uh, clothing. So not like today, right? No, no burial, you know. So this burial concept came from, is it, is it kind of a Christian thing? The burial concept, is it a Christian thing? When people die, uh, normally Christians they bury right they, they believe that the, the, the person will resurrect after the death right uh, this happens like even Jesus Christ but in Buddhism and Hinduism they burn the body they burn because they think that uh, there is no spirit that is going uh, Hinduism they believe but uh, Buddhism they have a different attitude but they burn it but in today's world, I think uh, burying uh, is more costly than uh, burning, I guess, right? Because you should have find out a certain place and then you have to pay for it. Okay. So every monk should use, not should use the clothing that were taken from the dead bodies. That's another, another thing that he requested from the Buddha. Every monk and nun should avoid eating fish and meat, I would say they should be vegetarians. Okay, so so and for there were five. The Buddha said, no, I'm not granting permission to these. He said, if you want to practice, uh, uh, you may practice. If you don't want to practice, you may practice the way that you want. So these are extreme things, right? So there's no concept called vegetarianism in Theravada Buddhism, but Mahayana, yes. Mahayana Buddhism, they say, you can't eat meat because the thing is that the fish or the meat could be your mom and dad or relatives in the past life. They, they have a different way of looking at it. But in Theravada, no. So anyways, so uh, 
if metta uh, is to be taken as a as a mental attitude so everything is mental in buddhism physical part also attached to mental thing verbal part is also attached to mental let's say you are talking to someone your voice is a little bit uh, uh, raised and probably some might think that uh, you are angry but probably you are not angry you are just giving an advice like your mother and father sometimes when they get mad with you right it can happen right they might say things but they are not really angry they they they, they want to fix something but if they are always uh, mad then it, there is a problem right <laughs> they have a problem uh, otherwise it should we can accept it but they may not be uh, immoral akusal having akusal so anyways i'm asking varshana now if metta is to be taken as a mental attitude like a mental thing so how do we practice this friendliness thing then in our daily life you know if metta is friendliness uh, which is a part of loving kind because when you say loving kindness like you have to start with friendliness right you have to be friendly because you know there are people even your uh, peers uh, other uh, students uh, in your high school classes there are people who are very difficult to get along with like even if you say something like a little thing they get mad and they're going to pick on you right there's something wrong i mean we might not be able to uh, fix them because it's on our business but it can affect so if metta is a mental attitude how do we see this friendliness how do we how do we think that this is very important in our life If you first want to create a relationship with someone, you need to become their friend first. Like uh, of course when it comes to your parents or like your family, it's they they immediately are kind of like your friends because they're your family. You're always going to be connected to them whether you like them or not. So, um first the best way to do it is you need to first find a way to talk to them and friendship is mentally but it could also feel both physically and mentally because first of all even though you may want to be their friend in your head you need to take the action to actually go like oh hi i'm um i like your personality um would you like to be friends with me or something like that and when you when you start to become friends with this person and you kind of get to know them like how they're what they like what they dislike what you know who they are then you start to kind of admire them in a way where you like you have friends you may not like love them in like you know the way as your parents but you still love them as a friend and you admire them and you like you know support them that's what friends do and so basically when i feel like the word metta when you're like friendship and it's mental but you also need to take that physical approach as well to go out and actually be friends with them but also it's more like a relationship of loving and loving and kindness where you are being kind and you are admiring them but you also need to create that friendship first yeah that's a great way of looking at it right i would say uh, no as you said the physical part is so important and then there are different layers of love because we know uh, filial love like parents one and then uh, i would say uh, different other i would say siblings have their different love and then uh, other people like generally speaking to every being like i think you just did the loving kindness meditation with bhante sumedha right uh, may i be well happy peaceful and this is you know this is what you've been doing and uh, another important thing that you brought up is very interesting because we are very different we all are very different even in a family everybody is different right now this happens when when it comes to uh, going to dining right in a restaurant like everybody wants different food right uh, if you want to watch tv i mean if there are many people in household then they want to watch different channels <laughs> like these differences of how right so i think it's very important for us to understand the differences when we practice metta uh, rather than saying that this is my way of loving so you should accept it you should uh, admit the way that i do 
might be a little bit challenging at some point, right? So uh, the more we understand other people in a careful, safe manner, the better we are in the practice of loving kindness. Uh, that's a good, uh, uh, I mean, beginning to our practice of loving kindness. Oh, okay, so uh, depending on the time, let's get into the subject, uh, I mean, with bodhisattvas. Now, bodhisattvas, or Pacheka Buddhas, or Arahans, they all practice metta uh, in different levels. Now, Arahans only practice metta paramita. They only practice the first layer, right? So they just practice it. And Pacheka Buddhas, private Buddhas, they only practice the first one and the second one, metta parami and metta upaparami. And the bodhisattvas, bodhisattvas are the ones who are going to be the Buddha. Some are some Buddhas, they practice it in three ways. Now, I think you all know the differences between this first, second, third uh, ways, right? The first one is the general practice, you practice metta. Second one is you are practicing the particular paramita, the virtue. Now, in, in this case, loving kindness, even by risking your bodily parts, right? Sometimes you're going to practice metta and you don't know the other person might uh, slap you, huh? <laughs> right? It's, you are in a difficult situation. You're going to be very patient to somebody, but you don't know what's going to happen, right? There are sometimes, uh, even when you talk to animals, some animals are very impatient, not like domesticated, right? A pretty, uh, you know, high energy. But some animals are very patient, right? So you always carry a risk. Well, you get bitten, you get slapped, you get uh, uh, kicked, you get uh, attacked, you know? These things can happen. So the second one is that even risking your bodily organs, you uh, practice metta. I mean, this is for the Pache to this, right? The third one is even risking your whole life, sacrificing. Bodhisattvas practice that way. Uh, we have uh, so many, you know, examples in Jataka stories about that. So this is basically uh, how we have to understand metta. But I wanted to uh, bring your attention to something very interesting. How many of you know the other important areas of metta? Now, uh, Varsha brought up very interesting, uh, you know, aspects about this topic. Um, although this is mental, I mean, we of course know because in Buddhism, everything becomes mental because it carries a karma part. That is why it becomes mental, right? Because there are people who are uh, showing kind of a fake friendliness, right? Behind the scene, they attack you. Are there people like that, Tarushan? Yes. Yeah. You haven't met them. <laughs> You're not supposed to meet such people. But it can happen because the society is very compar comparative. Everybody's trying for the same thing, probably. Money issues, status issues, uh, other uh, personal things, right? So uh, there may be people who might show it physically, but it might not be uh, the truth. But as you said, what I said, it is also very important to show it to other people. Now, let's say, uh, I mean, you always admire your mother and father, but if you don't show some, uh, I would say some uh, care from the physical side, go and be around your mother, right? Talk to her talk to my father, they don't feel it, right? Is it correct? You you just say, I love you, but you don't show your, you know, that care. They, they, they might not feel it, right? That like you, you talk to a cat, hey, you know what, I care, you know, I love you. Cat doesn't know what's this, right? Dog is either. You gotta show some kindness, some loving kindness, you know, just patting, stroking, they feel okay. There's something going on. But you know the limit. You want to mess up on anything, right? We have to do everything at a limit. So uh, so the, it's kind of a, you know, kind of a paradoxical thing. So we have to be very careful. So we need the physical part and also the mental part. But mental part is very important. On the other hand, metta is one of the divine abodes. Have you heard this term? Divine abodes. Satara Brahma Vihara in Singhala. What are they? 
Now in Buddhism, the Buddha says, if you want to live to the fullest, to the highest, now you only live one, you are still uh, high school students or uh, still learning, studying, and you're also living, right? And we are also living, everybody's living. So if you want to live to the highest, to the fullest, then there are four virtues we have to practice simultaneously. Isn't it interesting? Very interesting. And the Buddha says, if you practice those four simultaneously, you live just as the Deva Brahma. Who are they? Uh, Obindu, Deva Brahma. Who are those beings? They're like the heavenly beings. Uh -huh. In Buddhism, we know uh, the Brahmas are the highest beings. The Brahmas are the highest Devas uh, next to them. So the thing is that Devas have karma, desires, but Brahmas don't. Because here when they practice their bhavana, meditation, they always practice uh, uh, to get out of uh, unnecessary desire, sensual desires. But the Devas are not. So they are still having some uh, higher, I would say, uh, more, ha more physical happiness in those places. So the Buddha says, if you want to live like a Brahma, not like a Deva, okay? If you want to live like a Brahma, then these are the qualities you need to practice simultaneously. Let's take the first one, Metta. Uh, metta is a perfection and also the first point of entry, the entry point to the divine, about. So we start with our practice called metta. So then whose practice is the anger, the opposite of unfriendliness? It is not the practice of the devas, brahmas. It's the practice of the folks who are not friendly to other people. Then the second practice that you may start from one to the other one, but ultimately you practice them simultaneously. The second practice is Karuna. What is Karuna? Now we have a problem in the translation. Now it is Metta is translated as to be loving kindness. Problem is compassion's uh, active level is kindness. Let's say you are compassionate, but when you want to be compassionate in real action, what you are doing is kindness, right? Then how come this part has been merged with the loving kindness. So that part, love and kindness. That's a bit, uh, you know, uh, tricky thing to understand. So I would say metta basically means friendliness. We are, we are supposed to be friendly with everybody, regardless of anything. That's a very good thing, right? Uh, this is something we learn uh, into this world. So if we, if we say, Metta is uh, friendliness, then karuna is going to be compassion, right? It is compassion. What are the other words that we have to deal with when we talk about compassion? Sympathy, empathy, kindness. Oh, we have to find out the differences between these steps. Anybody knows uh, the differences between sympathy, empathy, and kindness? Well, I think sympathy is when you feel bad for something that like someone is going through and then empathy is like you can relate to that person. Pasha, any thoughts? Um, yeah, kind of like um, how Obindu said. Um, I think empathy is like being able to put yourself in that person's shoes yep. and basically feeling exactly how they feel. Like, let's say, for example, if like one of my friends went through a loss of their family member and even though I didn't lose my family member, then I could still, I still feel, I could still feel her pain and I could still feel how she is feeling exactly how she's feeling. And so I even though she cries and it has nothing to do with me, I still cry as well because I feel her pain. You so, want to relate, so, relate the suffering yeah, to you. Yeah, you with relate her. with her. But uh, the sympathy is basically where you 
you try to relate to this person, but you don't really feel the exact same way as the other person does. You just feel kind of like a pity for this person, and you just feel bad for them, and you want to you want to like make them feel better, but you don't feel exactly the same as they do. And kindness is basically being the nicest like being nice and being just you know a good person in general mm -hmm. great so sympathy as you said uh, the generic understanding is the knowledge of the suffering the other of the other person sympathy so we sympathize and then empathy means uh, we are going to put us in other people's shoes because we understand we're going to relate to that suffering but we may not going to do things in action so compassion is that full version of empathy and when you are compassionate what you do is kindness uh, we have a lot of things like daily kindness what you can do to practice daily kindness like uh, some people might try different things huh? uh, you pay for the you pay for the person ahead of you at starbucks and somebody's gonna pay for you <laughs> i mean i don't know how these things go going over somebody is making uh, this attitude and then uh, everybody's helping each other and what are the other things we could do uh, for practicing daily kindness um, or any you have any thoughts uh, well to practice daily kindness I feel like you would have to like actually be kind for like stuff that people actually need like help like for example if you meet someone that's um, you see someone on the street and they drop their groceries or whatever they bought, you can go and help them. That's something like daily kindness. But I would say like, if you see, if you see someone and like you, I don't know, you don't like their clothes, but you want to be kind, you don't just go up and say, oh, I like your clothes just so you can practice daily kindness. That's not, you need to actually feel and like have sympathy for the other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. I remember uh, there was something happened to me when I was in Vancouver many years ago, I think in 2015. Uh, I was actually waiting to buy uh, kind of a smoothie at uh, Blend's Coffee, right? Uh, and then uh, uh, actually somebody uh, cut the line like in front of me and then looking at me that I'm, I'm the first in the lineup and then uh, she felt bad and she was gonna buy, she was going to buy my drink at that point. Yeah, this happened to me. I mean, I don't know what's the basis of that kindness, but this happened. This is one thing. And there are so many other uh, ways. Uh, I wanted to know anybody else experienced things like daily kindness from other people uh, towards you. And they will talk about what we could do to other people. Tarusha, anybody was very kind to you on a daily basis, like randomly? or uh, long-term? Not that I can remember, but I've known, but I know a lot of people have been kind to me. Can you talk a little bit louder, please? Not that I remember anybody, okay. but I know that a lot of people have been kind to me. Mm -hmm. Like on the road, uh, in school, any, any other no, place? Are you, are you traveling sometimes in summer or spring break? Sometimes do you travel? You should travel? Yeah. You meet people? Sometimes in the summer, yeah, I travel. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other uh, daily kindness story that you want to share? Yeah. Well, share. Um, when I walk to school every single day, um, there was a few kids who walked by in my area. And one day um, I was walking to school back after school, no, I was walking home after school was finished. And um, there was this girl that I always see who goes to around the same street as me. And then um, I never really got to talk to her because I didn't know, I just, I just, you know, I didn't, I didn't know if she wanted to talk back to me or anything. So I just normally walked by home pretty fast and came home. And then, but one day when I was walking, um, she was like, hey, what's your name? And I'm like, oh, hi, I'm Varsha, what's your name? And she said, 
uh, oh, this is my thing. And then she's like, I always uh, watch you walk and I really like your jacket. And I'm like, thank you. And then I told her I liked her hair because her hair always had highlights in it. And I thought it was really cool. And I was like, well, I'll see you tomorrow. And then we said bye. And so I felt pretty good that I got to be able to talk to her. And then after that, we talked nearly almost daily when he came back from school. And it was pretty nice having someone like her to talk to. Was it more likely kind of giving a compliment to you? Like sometimes we can give compliments to others, right? To make them like more validated. Does it happen uh, already? <clears throat> like, do you think that, okay, I know, I know something like in the business uh, corporate industry, there was one gentleman, uh, he's a Sri Lankan Australian, and when he used to come to Canada sometimes, like he, you know, goes to restaurants and, you know, all these places. And now all these restaurants, they have Yelp and those reviews, right? Google reviews. Like, uh, let's say he, uh, he, he dines in, uh, Kind of restaurant, restaurant, so he's happy with somebody. I mean, the way how they treat. So uh, what he does right after the lunch or dinner, after back home, he's gonna do a review, make a review for that person with a name. And and what he's saying is that you know, now definitely everybody is very concerned about the reviews. And and looking the the owner is looking at looking at these reviews, looking at okay, uh, Craig. Did a good job today's serving to me. He did this and that, so it kind of like helps the business grow, right? So he's he probably he's not tipping well, tipping a lot. He might not have a lot of money to tip a lot, but he's doing that, so he knows somebody is going to get benefited in the proper way. So that means we have so many ways to do things to be kind. To others on a daily basis. The thing is that we are we don't understand how this affects other people, right? Especially to give a compliment, right? I remember uh, one lady. She's an old lady. Uh, she said to me, in a place like a Sri Lankan place, somebody told her that she's pretty. <laughs> so nobody has told her she's pretty up to that end in her life. She's very happy about it. See the difference you can make. I mean, that person did it, uh, uh, I mean, wholeheartedly, not like saying that you are pretty and expecting, you know, having some second idea. See, you are already pretty. Nobody has told that. Probably people are jealous. Probably people are culturally driven. They don't think that they have to say it, right? So she's so happy. So you made somebody very happy on that day. So there are so many ways we can make it without uh, messing up. So we have to be careful, but do the right thing in the proper way, right? Reviews, complimenting, appreciating, thanking others, right? So many ways to do it. Uh, or we do any any thoughts? See, we are talking about uh, some basic daily things we can do with the metta practice, and then karuna now karuna is. Uh, compassion and then kindness. Kind kindness is what we do for compassion. Uh, yeah, you. there's a lot of different ways because, like, mostly when people think about being kind, it's either like, either like donating something like money. Yeah, something like that, right? That's the notion. Yeah, but it's not right. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot more. Because it's either always like, either giving a compliment or like donating some money, but it's not just like two choices. There's so many different ways that you can like return a favor or like give them like show some kind of kindness. Like you can just like talking to someone, even that's like an act of kindness. As in, like you're just letting someone know that they're not like going unheard in the world. I remember uh, there was one guy telling me that he bought. Uh, a coffee to a homeless person in Vancouver, okay, from McDonald. But you know what the homeless person told him? He told him that, you know what, you bought the coffee during the happy hour, so I don't want it. <laughs> because it's free, and he, he thought it to be free. You, you went into the McDonald during the happy happy hour, so happy hour stuff, like I think there was a free coffee. 
So there are people who are expecting uh, things uh, for kindness, like with some monetary attachment, right? But anyways, we could do a lot of things uh, if we really know what to do uh, in our life. Okay, so karuna is then a, a, a step higher than metta. Because for metta, you can do without looking at one person. But karuna, you have to understand that empathize first and then to understand what's going on and then to do the custom tailored relevant help. Metta, you, you don't need the custom made help, but the karuna, you need that. So it's kind of a step ahead. Uh, but we also practice metta too, right? Something. And mudita is the third uh, abode, divine abode. Mudita means altruistic joy. That means being happy for others' achievements. It's a bit difficult now. Even you won't be uh, compassionate if, if you don't have mudita, altruistic joy. Like uh, Varsha, that particular girl told you that uh, your hands and so forth. I mean, I mean that's that that's a reflection of uh, happiness of you, right? And in in those stories about the woman and other things, so we had to be happy for other people. We always try to be happy for us thinking that things should happen to us. But being happy for other people is one of the greatest ways, ways of being happy. Now, for example, if you eat something very sumptuous, uh, look at the happiness. If you eat something really sumptuous, really delicious, and if you give that portion to other people, the happiness you have after some time, which one will uh, be more at that point? The moment you think you want to eat, yeah, you want to eat it actually. You're so hungry and you're craving for that. But uh, let's say you take some time after three months, you look back. What happened? What if I, I were to uh, give this to somebody who really need that? I mean, I'm not saying that you had to be, uh, you know, star, right? But uh, look at the difference between the happiness that you have by donating and then eating along. Which one, which one to be more joyful at a certain point? After some time, looking back, that thing, which one to be more uh, joyful is truly joyful, I mean. Not like fun, you know? Fun stuff can be like very temporal, right? you know? It's gone and then you have to find out another fun. But here, you know what? I mean, looking at the true happiness, true joy. Any idea? Is there a happiness by donating things to other people, like little things? Uh, yeah, I think we do have right? for other people is more satisfying than doing it for yourself. Yeah, I mean, we have to eat, but if we think that we can give it to someone, if we have more food or whatever, it's really want to, it's really good to give, right? Yeah. Like, but... If oh, sorry, gosh, I can go ahead. Um, Ovini can go first. Uh, it's okay. Uh, okay. So I feel like, um, uh, like if you were to, let's say you got like a, your favorite food and you really like it. I feel like if you were to give it away to someone, then looking back to it, you would feel much better, um, that you gave the food because you would also know that they enjoyed the food and you would just be so satisfied and it's more sad uh like you get more you're more happy knowing that you gave something something to someone and they're happy um more than just enjoying it yourself uh, that's the happiness that you make through a lot of hardships a lot of struggling a lot of people not you I mean, other people they see they think that this is something that i wanted to eat up yeah so that's what i was trying to say you know so when you look back it, reflect upon the particular thing. You are more happy when you donate, you know. That is mudita. Varsha? Um, yeah, so kind of like how Ovini said, um, it's like, it's kind of like that feeling where I like to bake a lot. So I bake things and when, even though it may be a dessert that I like, myself like maybe cookies or brownies or cake or muffins and I make it and then 
I, I'm about to cut a piece for myself and I'm like, hmm, I want to see how everyone else thinks about it first because I've already tasted it before and I want to know how everyone else likes it. And you kind of have this really good, nice feeling where you see someone else try that fruit that you normally eat and they're like, wow, it tastes so good. Oh my God, thank you so much. And it tastes so good. And then you feel like really, I don't know how to explain this feeling. It's like you feel proud of yourself that you did something right. And like that, that maybe that dessert that you kind of, that little piece of dessert that you sacrificed for someone else was still a big thing and that it was worth it. Yeah, so it is versus, uh, it is uh, <clears throat> eating alone happiness versus uh, the long-term happiness you are creating after some time. It's not like a kind of a uh, very quick kind of a happiness. <clears throat> yeah, so this is mudita. And upekha is the balance. I think the last paramita is going to be upekha. Uh, it's going to be uh, something that we're going to be doing on, I think, 6th, right? Yeah, 6th uh, of March. Um, before the uh, spring break. Okay, so today we were discussing about metta. Metta means friendliness. So friendliness has to be a mental attitude, but it should not uh, be limited to a mental attitude. It has to be relevantly physical. Right? As I said, that you want to show that you have care, love towards this person. Otherwise, they, they might not feel you very much. And then uh, also we had to be careful. There are fake people who showing fake kindness, fake loving kindness, fake metta, right? We had to be under, under, uh, understandable about those things too. So uh, bodhisattvas practice this paramita perfections in three ways. Metta paramita, metta upa paramita, metta paramita paramita. Any questions? You already asked questions. <laughs> yeah, Marsha. Um, my question is, I feel like it might be a dumb question, but um, you know how there's all the perfections of like patience, compassion, loving kindness, and so on. What about those feelings you feel that aren't perfect? Like maybe when you feel sad about something or angry about something, often like we don't really feel like we're perfect because we can't always feel like we're happy and perfect because there are times where you know you get angry at something and you get sad that something it's going to happen so what do you feel about that what do you think about that i think those feelings are very normal to all of us natural to all of us those feelings are actually arise because of a feeling that we don't have anything to do to other people we don't have anything to share with other people, like metta, karuna, mudita, upekha, they are uh, good feelings that we want, we need to spread to, uh, across, right? So when you think that uh, you are bored, you have nothing, because you are, you probably compare with other people what they have. So you look at other people, some people have money, food, all that. This could be a moment where we might feel that, oh, I'm all alone, I have nobody, nobody cares me, right? In Buddhism, it is always said that don't wait until other people give kindness to you. Other people give mudita to you. Other people give loving kindness, friendliness to you. You be kind first. You be friendly first. One example. When somebody comes to see the Buddha, do you think who's going to start the conversation? Was it the Buddha or the person who came to see the Buddha? It was the Buddha. And then who is going to smile first? Was it the Buddha or the person who... Uh, came over the Buddha because because we have to trust in ourselves we could do things probably we are not money wise affordable for stuff but we are making in our own way uh, in order to be a, in order in order to be a good person like a successful person we have to trust in ourselves to do all these good things I mean metta karuna mudita upekha then of course we can uh, get over these subtle uh, worries, frustrations that come at different times, right? Because they come uh, as a response to a notion that we are not uh, lucky or we are not, uh, I mean, good with some other people's achievements and all that. So give some, give some power to us, to you actually, that will empower you and then to start the practice. 
Uh, and then when you keep doing that, you will be successful. It takes time. Make sense, Vasha? Yep, it does. Okay. Okay. So uh, then let's uh, wind up from here, but then Bhatti Sumedhi is going to do the next lesson. So let's take uh, two to three minutes break and we'll be back. Okay. Good Sarnai. Sarnai, Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Thank you. you.